Hello again and welcome to another video. I am Benjamin and this is about Ethereum 2.0 in a nutshell, also called Serenity. So what are the big changes that Ethereum 2.0 will bring compared to Ethereum 1? So Serenity will be deployed in three stages, uh, phases. Phase zero is the initial public release of the new blockchain. It's called the Bacon Chain for now. Um, that is planned for December 2020, so should be really soon. And the point of this proof of stake, so that is what the first phase is about, yeah, phase zero is about proof of stake. Um, this is mainly about scalability and the vastly lower energy consumption that proof of stake brings compared to proof of work. And a block explorer for, um, for the Bacon Chain is also already available. Uh, phase one will be about sharding, and this is all about the scalability, um, basically only scalability. We will go into a bit more details in these um, phases in a moment. And the third phase, which is phase two, because in the programming world you start indexing at zero, not at one. Uh, phase two is about state execution, as we say, that basically means smart contracts, the ability to program the blockchain and have stuff executed as programs on the blockchain. This will be coming pretty late, basically, to the new Ethereum. So let's look into a bit more detail on this. Um, Ethereum 1 and 2, they will coexist for uh, until at least 2022. And why and, and how they will merge, coming in a bit. Um, Ethereum 2 does only gain the smart contract execution, as I mentioned, in the phase uh, 2, in its third and final phase, which is planned for 2022 right now. Um, we don't know if, if it will happen in that year or if it might be a bit later. Um, it's a very first thing, of course. But only then can Ethereum 2 really replace Ethereum 1 because Ethereum 1, or just Ethereum, is, uh, is as big as it is and as successful as it is because it is such a good smart contract execution platform. And this capability, as I said, will only come in the last phase to Ethereum 2, and that will be at 2022 in the earliest. And that also means that only after phase two is out and successfully running, only then will the Ethereum 1 ecosystem be really moved over um, to Ethereum 2.0. And this is the reason that Ethereum 1 and 2 will coexist for at least two years, likely a bit longer, two and a half, maybe three years. Um, an interesting point though is, we go a bit more into this uh, later again, Ethereum, Ethereum 1 is planned to become one of the shards that they will introduce in phase one that is about sharding. So now let's have a look into the phases themselves. This is all very high level, of course, still. Um, if the interest is there, I'd be happy to do a deep dive on some topics like proof of stake, proof of work, maybe the staking um, that will be coming in Ethereum 2, maybe the sharding. These are all topics that are worth their own videos, really, if the interest is there. So about phase one the proof of stake. So currently Ethereum 1 is proof of work, like Bitcoin, like most blockchains these days, and like most blockchains have been from the start. The thing is that proof of work has inherent problems. I really don't have the time in this video to go into the why of it. I think it's very interesting, but as I said, if the interest is there, happy to make another video that goes really deep. Um, the problems with proof of work, it needs a ton of computing power. This again, needs uh, necessitates a ton of uh, energy that needs to be used to to have this computing power and all of this gives us really really hard to solve scalability problems that are just inherent in the proof of work concept um, bitcoin for example is also massively working on this they're going um, a few different ways um, for example the lightning network comes to mind a few other ideas that are in the making still but basically Every blockchain, every DAT, um, the team behind those, of course, is aware of the inherent proof of work problems and everyone's trying to uh, come up with good solutions for that. Proof of work, um, oh, there's a mistake here. That should be proof of stake, of course, my bad. So in comparison, proof of stake. 
to prove our work. With proof of stake, the transactions are not confirmed by mining, as it is in proof of work chains or DLTs, but by validating. Now, this process is way less energy intensive because the difficulty is not artificially inflated as it is the standard in proof of work. And this also means that you don't need a huge uh, powerful computer or even a specialized uh, computers. You need a big stake uh, to confirm transactions because now you show basically your interest in the stability of the network, not by investing your money into computing hardware that then wastes huge amounts of energy and will be outdated in two or three years anyway. Now you show your interest in the uh, furthering of the network by having a big stake in it. And the bigger the stake, the bigger the likelihood that you will become, um, that you will be chosen as a validator, which is um, a way for you to make some money, of course, in, in the form of transaction fees. Uh, then we have the second phase, phase one, sharding. Sharding is, to put it simply, is really just we take one blockchain and then we split it up into multiple parallel blockchains. What's the point of that? The point of that is the scalability. Simply put, if you have n blockchains, then you can have n times as many transactions per second as you could have on only one blockchain. Now, this disregards overhead, of course, there's cross-chain communication necessary, there's cross-chain validation necessary, and a few other things that do also cost um, time and computing power, but this is just a tiny fraction of the computing power that actually goes into validating those transactions, mining those blocks. And um, if we split them up, then we have the effect that, let's just say we split one blockchain into 10 blockchains. And let's imagine we have the same amount of transactions per second uh, distributed over all these 10 blockchains that we before had on a single blockchain. What does this mean right now? That means that every single of these 10 blockchains only has to test one divided by 10 transactions per time that it had to uh, validate when it was all in one blockchain, right? Because there's only one tenth of the transactions on average per chain now. And that's exactly really the point of sharding. It is that all the nodes on every individual blockchain have so much fewer transactions to be at mine or validate that um, this just nearly linearly increases the, um, the scalability, the performance and the transactions per second. And of course, if the transactions per second are not all the time or most of the time, right up at the theoretical maximum that the current blockchain can supply, then this means that you don't have to compete with other users to get your transaction through instead of theirs by having ever higher transaction fees. So this means that the um, basically when the uh, number of transactions a second goes up that the network is capable of doing, then the price per transaction will go down because there's just less competition, assuming a similar number of transactions over time, of course. And so, yeah, to really um, bring it to the point, uh, the sharding and the phase one is all about the huge and scalable improvement uh, to the network's transactions, uh, per transaction per second capability. Ethereum 2 um, is planning to start out with 64 shards, the uh, the number can be increased in the future, of course, and that is a good thing that this sharding, uh, this this way of scaling is itself pretty scalable because there is nothing speaking against just again taking the sixty four shards and split all of these uh, into sixty four each, and thereby again sixty four xing close to 64xing the transactions per second that Ethereum 2.0 will be able to do. And yeah, that's what that is about. And yeah, I like to say it's a scalability thing that is itself scalable because you can just chart more and more. There is a theoretical upper overhead. So there will come a point, I assume this admittedly, I didn't do the math, but I assume there will come a point when um, adding yet another blockchain will increase the performance by so little that the added overhead actually eats that up again. But I do also assume that this point where adding more chains is not increasing performance 
is at extremely large numbers of blockchains that we are not going to reach anytime soon. And the last phase of Ethereum 2.0, the phase two, third one, is about state execution. That means it is basically about uh, implementing smart contracts. When phase two is out successfully and running, then Ethereum 2.0 is able to also deal with smart contracts. And I mean, Ethereum is the smart contract platform these days. So obviously um, that's an absolute necessity to be able for Ethereum 2 to replace Ethereum 1. And um, this is again why I said that uh, 1 and 2 will exist for quite a few, quite a few years, 2 or 3 years, who knows, um, in parallel. Um, yeah, so let's wrap this up. The important bits of Ethereum 2.0, Serenity. Phase 1, proof of stake. That's what that is about. It's just to switching from the proof of work to this new mechanism. As a basis, have this running good and stable and uh, verified secure. Uh, it's a completely new blockchain. It is planned to launch December 2020. Um, planned to launch on December the 3rd. Phase 1, sharding. All about scalability. That is it. It's all about the scalability. Uh, what's the effect of that for the user? You have your transactions or smart contract executions later then be executed faster and cost you less transaction fees. That's just great for everyone. And of course, it's a necessity for mainstream adoption, right? If we can't compete with something like Visa or so in transactions per second, then we can't ever hope to reasonably replace these uh, let's call them incumbent financial institutions. Because yeah, if the people can't actually use it for money uh, transfers as they are uh, doing it with the current systems, they will not want to switch over. And if we imagine the current Ethereum or Bitcoin being flooded with as many transactions as, for example, the Visa network is able to handle, it would, it would just be completely ended. It wouldn't even be slow, it would just not work at all. And yeah, the last phase is then about the smart contracts. It's about the uh, state execution. When this uh, is successful, then Ethereum 1 will be completely integrated, completely ported over into Ethereum 2. Um, an interesting detail that doesn't really matter for the user, admittedly. It's interesting from a technical perspective that they call phase 1.5 the one where they basically take Ethereum 1 and have it be one of those 64 blockchains that they um, introduce in the sharding phase 1. Yes, so that is the wrap up. That is Ethereum 2.0 in a nutshell. Change the proof of stake, then get the sharding in there for the scalability, and then bring the smart contracts back, and then we are done. Then we have Ethereum 1, but we have it way cheaper, way more performant, way more scalable, and then we have achieved serenity. This is why it's called that. I hope you liked this video, learned something, maybe found it interesting. If you would like a deeper dive into any of these topics mentioned or others, leave a comment or whatever, get in contact with us. If the interest is there, we are more than happy to provide you with more little informative videos. That's it. See you next time. Bye-bye.